And following uh, Martin Amidu being named as the special prosecutor, uh, we've had uh, a lot of civil society organizations and anti-corruption groups talking about it. Ghana Integrity Initiative is the local chapter for Transparency International. Uh, they've been very integri integral in making sure that graft issues are not only discussed, uh, but are put onto the main discussion platforms, into the mainstay of, um, uh, of local discussion and public fora. And so we have uh, the Corporate Affairs Manager for uh, GII, that's the Ghana Integrity Initiative. And um, I have Michael Boydi in the studio. Good morning to you, Michael. But um, what was the official position of um, the GII on, 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 this, on this appointment in the first place? Well, I think that GII, insofar as the appointment is consistent with the prescription of the law, GII welcomes it. And we hope that you know, <coughs> they, they, the appointment processes will be completed without hitches and then the office will be said our primary objective is to ensure that corruption is controlled. In this uh, and we know corru corruption has always been a big issue, especially under the Fourth Republic. And, and you have done, as an organization, a lot of work uh, on, on anti-graft issues or graft issues in our country. How, how big a, a Hercules tax is uh, the special prosecutor and the office in itself um, going to encounter? Or what really is uh, the case that it has to deal with, the enormity of them? I think that you can look at the case from various perspectives. We have the political challenge, which is what everybody seems to be talking about, as to whether the special prosecutor is going to wait hand or the special prosecutor is going to do the bidding of a certain uh, uh, group of politicians. So the, there is a political challenge. And then there is also the obvious challenge of resources. The, the I mean, Various anti-corruption agencies talk about Shraj, talk about Yoko, talk about the FIC, CID. They've all, one form or the other, complained about the inavailability of the requisite resources to be able to carry out the investigations that they need to do. So the issue of resources is, is real. Then we have all our normal, or I won't say normal, but our usual patronizing you know, cultural challenges that the special prosecutor would face. I mean, trust me, as soon as a case is, is comes up, you would find chiefs, uh, pastors, uh, politicians, opinion leaders marching up to, to plead. So these are, so the, the, the challenges are pers uh, have various so perspectives. You're, you're, as an organization, you believe that some of these are inhibitions that usually uh, some of the problems or challenges that people, that those who want to investigate graft issues tend to face. Yes, there are real challenges that they face. The issue of resources are real. The issue of even records keeping, administrative challenges are also one area that you have to look at. The re accessing records from one ministry to the other is a, is a big, big challenge that, that this, uh, the special prosecutor will face. And then finally, the cooperation of the citizens. I mean, these had worked against many, I mean, as a matter of fact, if you look at our, the NACAP, the NACAP, for instance, recognized, the NACAP is the National Anti-Corruption Action Plan, which is it's a roadmap that will guide the fight against corruption from 2014 to 2021 or 2024, I think 2024. Yeah, the NACAP recognizes that, look, hey, the challenge that the country had faced with the fight against corruption is largely because corruption had been fought from top down. Very little cooperation or support had been gotten from the citizens, or very little involvement, you know, had been from gotten from the all stakeholders. So the special prosecutor, one of the challenges that he may face is how do you bring all stakeholders on board? But you see, to be able to bring all stakeholders on board, there are also the enabling legislations that should go with it. The issue of the right to information, for instance, enable citizens to be able to access information and then volunteer this information to the special prosecutor. That has not been passed. The issue of the conduct of public officers uh, 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 bill has also been, be, not been passed. I mean, this for, uh, conduct of public officers helps in, for instance, uh, public officer uh, uh, asset declaration uh, helps in the verification of assets 
that has been declared by public officers. So therefore, if a, a public officer within my area or jurisdiction says that I have A, B, C, D, and I don't, and 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 he's lying, he declares probably assets that he he plans to acquire if as he gets into office. How do we verify? How do we volunteer this information to the uh, uh, special prosecutor? So there are uh, legislations that will require that you know the government ought to pass to enable citizens or stakeholders to support the special prosecutor. These legislations have not been passed. Talk about the witness protection. So we 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 say well we have uh, 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 we have uh, whistleblowers act now. How do I? How do you guarantee that if I come to blow the whistle, okay, my cover my, will not be blown. My cover will not be blown, and my life will not be in danger. So, but the whist, the, the the special prosecutor will need a whistleblower or whistleblowers to be able to. And we're saying that these evidence. are physical people. No. So they physical need to go people. testify in court, whether in camera or or, or, or not. Or not. That's right. So, and and so, and they are unveiling themselves. Exactly. Also, exposes them to expose to, their. Thank you. That's oh. good, that's good. So uh, these are things that the special prosecutor. These are uh, for you uh, anti-graft organizations. That, yeah. uh, are you extremely worried about the absence of some of these uh, structures yes. that are otherwise, in your belief, could have ideally made the special prosecutor in its office more effective? Yes, we are extremely worried because, you see, these are enabling legislations that will help citizens and, and well-meaning Ghanaians to help in the work of the special prosecutor. Because, you see, if you only think that the special prosecutor will come with a magic wand, then he's only going to do the same things we've done over and over and, what, Mr. Uh, Bodhi, and let expect me ask different you. results. Um, let's take a scenario where the special prosecutor, and now we know that um, it's Martin Amidu, but mm -hmm. we're talking about the, the office, not necessarily the, the, the personality, um, has to go and investigate um, a case of... Uh, Maybe some wrongdoing at uh, a ministry, mm -hmm. um, because of the absence of the right to information law, mm -hmm. we're likely to have information not released to the office of the special prosecutor. Is that what you're saying? Well, no. And then no. two, if okay. let's say there's a somebody who blows a whistle or could have blown a whistle, mm -hmm. the absence or the probability of him being exposed if he comes forward, mm -hmm. even though they may have told him or her that the, his identity will be protected, that could also lead to people perhaps drawing back and not. Uh, they are possibly, yeah, these yes, are fears. These are fears. These are legitimate fears. But you see, the special prosecutor can, can actually access whatever information. Because you see, the special prosecutor can cite you for obstructing justice if you refuse to give the uh, special prosecutor the requisite information. But the citizens, who will cooperate voluntarily. voluntarily to give the special prosecutor they information? They have, they, they have no protection. And they have no protection. Because of the absence of the law. Thank you. And that, these are the challenges. So that, because you see, the special prosecutor cannot possibly know it all. Cannot possibly know it all. It would require people within specific sectors to hint them and say, look, please, do you want to throw more light in this area or that area? These, look, these files probably had been shredded yesterday, but I was able to keep a copy. So these are information that And that's a whistleblower. That's a whistleblower. But, but the whistleblower is handicapped because he has no protection. The whistleblower is handicapped because he, has, he cannot even access the information that he needs. Because, you see, you don't also want to go and get the, uh, the special prosecutor, go wild goose chasing. You know, which you, is possible. Yeah, which is possible because, you see, the, the whistleblower, by the law, says that if they suspect a crime or corruption being committed, if they suspect it or they have cause to believe that a corruption had been committed or they are victims of it, they can report. But you see, so if I come to you and say, look, I, looking at you, you know, I suspect that you are doing something or, or maybe ah, but you were just made a minister and now you're putting up a house, so I think that you are, you are corrupt. I'm sending the special prosecutor to go wild goose chase because I'm not giving them any concrete proof. But no specifics. No specifics. But yet, the law mandates the special prosecutor by all strike when they receive such complaints to act. So if they act and nothing happens, they don't get any joy, no, no evidence. When, them, when, them, when, 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 the, when they were collating the views of the memoranda, mm. 
Um, what, what was the position of Ghana Integrity Initiative on some of these things? No, we made, we, we, we made a lot of recommendations, including uh, having these legislations, but as well as we also recommended having a governing body, the, the kind of qualification the governing body must have. We also recommended that, look, the appointment should be open and competitive, we were not successful. So ideally, they would have just published. That would have published and invited and people be to apply, and then people shortlisted, apply shortlisted, blah, blah, blah. and then the number of that shortlisted. That would have been better. Started. That is what we called for, because you see, what we were afraid of is that we were also mindful of the various sensitivities that are springing up. I mean, a clear example is the Martin Amidu thing. That we, they, they, if you listen to comments that have come, civil society were very right because we said that, look, if you don't open it up and then go through a transparent and competitive process, anybody you would, you would, you would appoint, people will have issues with it because people will think that, look, Martin Amidu is being appointed because Martin Amidu has an ax to grind with the NDC. So it is just, well, he, he's coming on... The first, uh, the, with, under the pretext that he's an NDC, but really the government wants to witch hunt us. That's, well, these for are all some his of the utterances, and the, I'm not saying that that's why he was appointed, but for mm -hmm. all his utterances prior to now, mm -hmm. Uh, he had an axe to grind with the with the elsewhile government of the NDC. I don't think so. I think he has an axe to grind with persons he perceived as being corrupt within the uh, government. Okay. Not necessarily the entire government, because you see. The NDC, look at, four, four million people voted for the NDC. And then the NDC has a core support of at least one million persons in there. It's, has Do you think one of after those all of them? and for which even some he's put on his own portals <laughs> and channels on YouTube, uh, makes him perhaps more objective or will be seen in the light of being more objective on the other side of the political divide if, let's say, he was going for certain personalities or would go for certain personalities within the Ellsworth government? I think, I think his utterances clearly stated what he stood for. And, and I won't fault people when they, 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 they vent their position on issues. As long as those positions are, are legitimate, as long as those positions does not undermine or does not go to hurt the rights and freedom of, of persons. That's all. But you see, the difference is that those authors, he made them in his personal capacity when he was just a commoner like me. Now he's guided by law. Now he's, he, he, he's going to operate within a certain confines of, 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 of a legal environment. So I, he cannot take those utterances, those, you know, activism on the job. He can only take it so long as it promotes the national interest, not any selfish. Because see, if he takes the same, the same, somebody could also cite him for conflict of interest. All throughout the Fourth Republic, organizations like yours, the CDD, etc., mm -hmm. and the other civil society organizations, those are the forefront of um, the fight against corruption, have always tended to do those projections based on perception. Um, perceptions really are not real, are they? Well, perceptions may not be real, but over the years, the perception, uh, cor a corruption perception index had proven that perceptions are very close to reality in our country as far as corruption is concerned. I mean, we, we, didn't, we didn't also just do the, the, the corruption, we don't always just do the corruption perception index, but we did a report last year the knowledge, perception, and then experiences of corruption. And we realize that it is so consistent with the perception corruption in this. The various uh, in organizations that were perceived to be corrupt, we experience the corruption every now and then. If you look, we also have a portal where, and, and we have a to free numbers where people report corruption. And most of the corruption allegations that people make are very consistent with the perceptions that we get from, from when we do those surveys. So they are not, they may not be real as in proven cases, but they are, they are real experiences that people go through all the time. So I think that, I mean, we, we, we say corruption is, is increasing in this country, the perception is there, and, and, and sincerely too, if you take the amount, the resources that are lost to the state as a result of corruption, it gives credence to the fact that indeed, Corruption is on the We rise. tend to get those reports when we have parliament um, 
Is it uh, the Auditor General, yes, the Public reports, Accounts Cross exactly. Committee is looking exactly. at all that. So you exactly. take a look at the, the Auditor General's report and you get to know how much is lost. Absolutely. The last time was around $5 billion. That was exactly. last year. A year before it was $4 billion. Exactly. But at, at the end of the day, we know that these perceptions uh, are from people within the public within the public sphere, as far as the demographics are, the right. generality of the public. Right. So the perception is that the politician is always corrupt, the police service. They are just, we have a group of people, institutions, etc. Mm -hmm. But really, the general society, the fiber is corrupt. Well, I think that the politicians are a reflection of the general society. Great. The policemen are all recruited from the general society. So it is, it is, it is a mirror. It is a reflection of the, 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 the corruption within our society. So I wouldn't say that. I, 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 it, it, it is not easy to conclude that, look, the general society, everybody is corrupt. So you lump everybody in the same basket. But invariably, I think that corruption is increasing. You know, and, and the fact that people do not perceive corruption as a high risk and uh, 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 venture, but rather see it as a very uh, 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 a gainful venture, a low risk and a gainful venture. So that is the that is the challenge that the country is faced. That we are no more perceiving corruption as a high risk, and therefore people think that look, let's get into it, and once we get into it, we profit thereof. The, the price we pay for being corrupt are relatively low. Well, so we sent our man, our rover uh, man, into um, town, and uh, Maxwell Agbagba is somewhere in Accra. Uh, we just want to collate views as to what people think about the appointment of Martin Amidou. Uh, Maxwell, good morning, and go on with um, the special you have for us this morning. Have been waiting for um, arrived yesterday when President Kufuado um, announced the nomination of Martin Amidu as special prosecutor. Now, 10 minutes after that announcement, it was the number one trend on Twitter with a lot of Ghanaians um, sharing varying opinions on um, his nomination. Today, we are here on the streets of a crowd very close to Tama Station to hand over the microphone to the people uh, to find out from them exactly what they think about that nomination. And behind me, uh, the newspapers all on display, all of them are washed with the nomination of Martin Amido. I have with me Richard Ashali and then Oscar Asari uh, to also share their opinions on the nomination. Mr. Asali, what do you think about... Uh, first of all, let me start. How, how, how did you take it it's when you very, heard announcement? Very, very good. Martin Amedou is very, very, very prominent and then he's a very truthful. It seems the president knows him already because he's a friend of the late Mr. Joseph A. Adams, the former deputy commissioner of police, CID. And he's a close friend to Martin Amedou. And once uh, Martin Amedou is a friend to him and he also shares boundary, Mr. Am Martin Amedou also and uh, Rene Kufuadu shares boundary with Mr. Adams. So they were close friends. He knows him very well that he can handle the position. Even the, uh, at his death, during the death of uh, Mr. J. Adams, he has informed Martin Amidou. Hello. He has informed Martin Amidou that he should take the money, he should make ready and then take the mat money that uh, Wyoming took. So I'm sure the money will come back to government chest. So I'm, I'm very happy about what the government have done. Thank you. Thank you, President. Thank so, you. So were, you, were you surprised um, after the announcement yesterday? Oh, because, I mean, a lot of people really did not expect that. Well, I'm very surprised. He's done a very good job. He's have done a very good job. Okay. I'm surprised. Okay. He's very good. Let and me, he me... can do the work, too. Okay. He can do the work. Great. Let me find out from um, Oscar Sari. Um, were you surprised by the announcement yesterday? No, I'm not surprised by the announcement. Because Martin Amidou is a Ghanaian. Okay. And he had the integrity to do the work. Mm. I follow Martin Amidou since he came to the, by the uh, what is called, political sense. From JJ's time up to this time. Yeah. The man is good. He can do it. There's nothing wrong about it. And Nanadu is somebody who has followed politics in Ghana here. Soon generation. So he knows what he's doing. Okay. He knows people who, are, who have got the courage and the integrity to do their work. Mm. I think Martin Abidu is such a, such a person that he will not even favor his, even his own uh, son or wife. Mm. He said, look, in Ghana, you have to get somebody who is courageous to, to fight for us. Mm. 
And uh, look, let us forget about NDC and MPP. And let us go for Let us think about the country first. So that whoever can think about the country is the person who can do the work for us. So I see nothing wrong with taking uh, uh, Amidu as a uh, this, uh, public person, the chairman of the public prosecutor. It is good. Yeah, it is good. It, you see, it will let us know that Nana Akufuado is not thinking about only MPP, but he's thinking about the nation. That is all. So what people are talking about, if we haven't done anything, when we are passing by police station, if you, if you think we are not a thief, you have nothing to fear. Why? If we have not taken any money from the nation, or if we have not uh, squandered any money, why should we fear Martin Amadou? Talking about taking money from the state, um, there are some assertions out there um, that because he was um, fired um, by, um, I mean, former President J.E. Mills, um, then when he was the Attorney General, and, you know, he fell out with um, some NDC members also. Some people think um, that because of that, he would witch hunt them, he would target them for prosecution. Are, that, those are some assertions being shared on the streets. Do you agree with that? Oh, that is their mind because they are fearing their shadow. Mm. They are afraid of their shadow. Okay. Yes, but Martin Amidu can do the work perfectly. He said, Ghanaian, all right. And he, once the president has nominated him, there's no mistake. And he will do the work. I know he will do the work. I know him personally, and I know he will do the work. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Um, now, same question but to Mr. Is it Ashley? going to be that when Mati Amidu calls you, mm -hmm. that day he will jail you? No. We have competent lawyers in Ghana here. They will defend you. So no one should get afraid of what is going, is going to happen. When we are being called, you go there defend yourself. If you are not taking it now, well, you'll be set free. So no one should fear to entertain the fears. I think we are going to do the work for Ghanaians, and he will succeed. By the grace of God, he will succeed, okay. and Ghana will succeed. Okay, lastly, um, do you think corruption would go down? I mean, the uh, uh, um, corruption would go down with a nomination of Martin Amidou? Would oh, I hope the corruption will go down, because he put in, he wrote in papers that uh, the president should cycle Wyoming. Then later he will draw the letter from the Attorney General that he should he have leave everything to the president. And I hope people, because of that, people who are afraid and know will not do corruption, will not corrupt. So you think that we, with the nomination or with the appointment of Martin Amidou, people will be scared now to engage in corrupt practices? Actually, That's what they're, especially actually, in the public people sector. Will scare, people will scare for corruption. Yes. Public sector workers. Workers will be scared and they won't do they won't corrupt. Okay. They won't corrupt. They won't they won't corrupt. Okay. The, pres, the president have done a very good job. They have done a very good job. May God bless him. May God bless him and live long. Are you optimistic, uh, Mr. Sari, that um, Martin Amidu coming in, we sh uh, I mean we're sure that he's going to be approved by uh, Parliament. With him coming in, do you think I mean, we would, we would, we'll be making headway uh, with our fight against corruption. Oh, yes. You see, we cannot do it one day. Though he's a human being, unless we can just help him by at least stopping what we have been doing for the past. You see, if you and I say that my maternity has come to fight for corruption, we have to also help him to stop that corruption. And we still have Michael Bwedi from Ghana Integrity Initiative. And we know that it's a local arm of Transparency International, and they have a lot to say about it. Now, as far as now we have uh, somebody appointed, the special prosecutor, etc. And the perception has always been that the politician, the police, the parliamentary uh, members, etc., they really are the most corrupt. What about dealing with corruption as we see it in the Auditor General's report, in which even the civil servant or somebody who works in, in the MMDAs, the etc., etc., they are, they are those who tend to perpetrate 
the embezzlement, the crime against the state day in, day out. How, how do we synchronize that with what work the special prosecutor has to do? I think the beauty of the law allows the special prosecutor to take cases from the public accounts. So once upon a time where we had always questioned the work of the public accounts uh, committee, I think that era is soon going to fade out where the public account, when the public account committee finishes its work and, 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 and finds reports, it writes their reports, the parliament discusses their report and accepts the report, the auditor, uh, the special prosecutor can then pick the, the, the work of the, uh, of, of, of the, the public, the report of the public account and go after individuals that have been indicted, that, that would be indicted in, as, as being corrupt. So I think that the, we have come, the, the, uh, uh, we've, we've actually moved forward in our fight against corruption. So either to cases that did not see uh, prosecution or, or are now going to see prosecution. You know, so... You mean ca cases of individuals appearing before and, and, and asking for clemency or mercy or and, then, cry and, and they don't away. go through any judicial yeah, system. No, no, no. This time over. around is going they to be, be over. Up they could be picked up by the special yeah, prosecutor. They should be picked up. They should be picked up. You understand me? And you and I can report, can go to the special and say, look, these cases, we believe that it should be picked up. And then we, the special prosecutor would be, uh, is mandated by their law that set us up to pick up the cases. How? So, how small a case can the special prosecutor prosecute? I don't think there is any. The, the, fortunately, the, the bill proposed the threshold, but then the, 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 the very person who has been appointed critiqued it. And so that component was expounded from the bill. And so the law has, has been passed, does not give any threshold. It says that the special prosecutor is going after corrupt cases in public procurement, corrupt cases you know, in, in the public sector. So. As soon as you know you, you, you are found wanting, I mean, you are a guest. Should we be client. worried that the law states, and I was reading it, I was going over it yesterday, of course, during the time of um, mm. all those um, getting the recommendations of the memoranda, etc., we're all following it. We read the bill. Now it's a law. We, I, we, I had to go through the law again just for today. And um, inherent in there is the fact that it still has to work closely even though it's independent, with the Attorney General. They have to... So what does he... No, I think that, you see, pe yes, it's independent, but you see, what we must understand is that the Act, as has been passed, the OSP Act, or the Special Prosecutors that Act... That has been passed. Yeah. That has been passed. Did not amend Article 88. Article 88 still vests the prosecutorial powers in the Attorney General. Of the state, of, in the Attorney General. In the Attorney General. General. And therefore, what the Attorney General had done is to delegate part of the prosecutorial power to this office, just like the Attorney General had done to the police, the Forestry Commission. This office, does it need the approval indirectly of the office of the Attorney General? Of course it does. Okay. Of course it does. So, because it's only... It's so it's only, possible yeah. uh, there could be a case against somebody in government. I'm not saying this trip. Mm -hmm. uh, this time, it could be another time. Mm -hmm. And the Auditor General may not be comfortable about it. And so that Auditor General's office will not give the go-ahead for the Special Prosecutor to perhaps work on the case. Right. You see, the law does not say the, attorney, the uh, Special Prosecutor would have to go for permission to prosecute I'm, a I'm case. I'm not saying permission. No, I'm, I'm permission. saying that. Yes, I'm saying that. There's, there's a thin line between what the permission is and uh, what is not. Go ahead, yes. So it, the law says that it will independently take on its cases and run with the case. We do understand. The only that. difference is that when it's done with the case, it would have to report to the Attorney General that I have done this case, I've brought the case to conclusion, these are the assets I was able to retrieve, or the proceeds of crime that I was able to, these are the prosecutions I secured. Yes, that is, that's all the law requires. The, can, the only challenge that, we, that require that the 88 in the long run or in the medium term to long would have to be expand, or, uh, amended is the issue of the nolly prosecutor. But you see, in the law, it was without, in our expectation that in the event where the Attorney General would have to evoke that powers, it has to give explanation why to the general public. We are expecting that Attorney General, so that, well, and you know, there are also political you, consequences you, civil to it. society and anti-corruption groups are thinking that explanation should be genuine or should make sense. Even if it doesn't. 
even if it doesn't, it's a political risk the Attorney General will be taking. Okay. Because, you see... It will be an indictment. Exactly. Public opinion Precise. will either be positive or negative. So, exactly. And so, so, and so whoever the Attorney General will be at the time in taking that decision will weigh the consequences. Will weigh the political consequences. I, that, 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 that is it. So I think there are checks and balances here that makes the special prosecutor wh fairly why, why independent. Why do you think the structure of the state of, uh, of the, the political system, and then perhaps maybe I'm shying away from saying why is it that the president didn't wait for mm. Article 88 to be amended so that we have uh, an, a really autonomous um, special prosecutor, somebody the, who really is independent? The, no, the, the challenge is that the Article 88 is an entrenched clause. And therefore, the requirement to have it uh, amended is it's, it's quite elaborate. And therefore, let's also not forget that, look, the world is not waiting for us. Corruption is eating us up. It is costing the, by Imani's expectations, it's costing the nation about $3 billion a year. I mean, think about what you took to construct this, uh, the uh, snitch, uh, the, uh, I said, the, uh, Reach Hospital, the Accra Regional Hospital, what it took to construct this overhead, what it took to construct the Atuabo gas plant. It's about $1 billion yeah. to construct Atuabo gas, plant. gas so plant. So in a year, we, we construct ga three gas plants in, in people's pockets. You are saying a gas plant can also co cost $3 billion. Is that, that's what, what you're I'm saying. saying well, is we're that, not here to... No, what I'm saying is that it costs us $1 billion to, to construct. Uh, so if we are losing $3 billion, then in a year, we could have constructed three of the gas do plants. You know, do you know that elsewhere in the world, they construct just... Uh, uh, a bridge over some water body and it's expensive long span of bridge yeah. so what i'm billion. saying is that what i'm saying is that if the country is losing that much to corruption then the opportunity cost of corruption is the development that we are not getting so you civil so society organization we believe that we believe that the, the we cannot wait to amend Article 88 before setting up the special process. it's too risky it's just too risky <laughs> the cost of corruption to this All nation right. is just too high okay. So you promise to work closely with the Office of um, the Special Prosecutor? We are going to help in, in the public education. In fact, we have, all, we have also started talking to uh, donors for support. Uh, STAC has been uh, uh, helping in, in, in this whole process. And I'm sure they are going to continue. We are working closely with CDD and the Corruption Watch. We are working with Ghana Anti-Corruption uh, Coalition so that we can all come together and support the OSP to do the public education that is required and get the public support to help the OSP, the Special Prosecutor, to do its work, as well as also monitor the work of the Special Prosecutor so that any time the prosecutor's work it goes, you know, we, 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 we smell a rat in the special prosecutor's work. We can also then bring to the fore. Uh, with and Martin Namidu, you're not going to smell a rat. Amen. Maybe another one Amen. after seven years. Amen. All right. So we, we've been speaking to Michael Boydi. Michael Boydi is with Ghana Integrity Initiatives, handles corporate affairs. And we're grateful that you found time today, even though we will say your time an hour before now. But uh, you have great patience, and that's good for you. Thank you. All right. Much. So enjoy your Friday. Thank All you. All right. Enjoy your weekend as well.